Good morning. So today I thought to start this a little differently for the simple fact that this is going to be a tough topic to talk about. So if you had headphones in, uh, you might want to take them out and just enjoy. So sending you a lot of love and light and a little bit of healing on this journey because it is a tough one. So what I wanted to talk about was um, when you do go through that spiritual awakening and you start um, switching up from the toxic energy you're used to to get to a more pure energy, um, you're going to lose a lot of people and you're going to hurt from this at first. You're going to feel like you've been abandoned. You're going to feel like you've been orphaned, no matter your age. Um, at this point, I haven't spoken to my family and my sisters probably a year. <clears throat> Excuse me. My parents since Father's Day, so I'm guessing that's around six months. I did reach out to my dad yesterday, and we talked for a minute, but it's always like that shallow conversation. So, um, like I said, just know you're going to start losing a lot of people. And at first it's hard, but then it gets easier in the fact that now you are living your life, you know, because what I had to let go of were karmic people. And it's hard to believe that our family can be our karmic partners or the people that really do not have our best intention at heart. So when it comes down to it, <clears throat> it's kind of um, pushing you, testing you. What are you willing to let go of to be able to expand in your life? Because most of us are used to playing it small. You know, we don't want to upset people. We don't want to rock the boat. We don't want to be talked about. There's a lot of things that we do for a reason, you know, and I think most of us have a hard time being honest with ourselves in the fact that um, we believe that we're empowered. We believe that we have the ability to make choices on our own. But when you look at the reality of the situation, um, you're making choices based off of how somebody else is going to react to what you're doing. And um, it's very important to understand that you can't choose how someone's going to react to what you're doing. <clears throat> Throat chakra is not happy today. But um, what you do have the ability to control is how you're going to react to somebody, how they're treating you. And when you can start um, owning your own emotions, you know, not exploding because they left you out or um, they talked about you behind your back or backhanded compliment or just poked at you to get you to come up out of that character because believe me the more you ascend on this journey the more people will try to convince you that you're trash that you aren't any better than them and it's okay to believe you are because we're not all the same we're not all cut from the same cloth. We don't all make the same choices. We don't all treat people the same way. And I grew up hearing, um, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And my entire life, I have been giving, caring, loving, kind, um, compassionate, accepting, just unconditional love, left and right. I didn't get that in return. And I kept telling myself, I'm not going to let somebody else's behavior dictate my behavior. <clears throat> I'm not going to let somebody else provoke me to become lesser than what I am. 
And I've lived that way for a long time. And instead of um, now continuing letting people just spit in my face or mock my behavior, I've been alone. I'm fine with that. I would prefer to be alone than to um, keep interacting with people that do not have my best interest at heart. And in reality, they don't even have their own best interest at heart, which is sad because we're all we have in this world. We're all that matters in this world, honestly. Just like I told my boyfriend the other day, whenever you're on that deathbed, the people around you aren't going to comfort you. You know, they're, they can be there, they can witness you, but they're not going to have the ability to make you feel better about the life that you've lived. <clears throat> Goodness. So when it comes down to it, you have to live a way that you're going to be okay with, you know, and a thought came to my mind last night and I had to go write it down on my Facebook. And it was, oh, you thought you had that power? No, baby, I shine so bright because of the darkness. And it just, you have to look at the concept that when you are surrounded by that darkness, you can either become a part of it or you can shine. And I will tell you, the more that you're amongst it, because we live in a world that's sleeping, honestly, people don't consider the reactions that they're going to get, which is fine. Don't consider it. But one thing that's really important in this life is learn to pick your battles. Because when you can learn to look at, okay, if I do this, that person's going to react like that. Now you're picking your battles. But if you're having to constantly um, play it small or not answer truthfully or alter yourself and how you would actually choose to live because of other people, your best bet is to be alone. Allow yourself the time to heal so you can ascend to a less toxic environment because this, this world, like I said, it's sleeping. And in that concept, it's toxic because when you're, when you're participating or entertaining low vibrational behaviors, attitudes, individuals, you're not going to live your life to the fullest. So like I said, when you do have that awakening and it's almost like a, where am I at? Oh, wow. You start to notice everything around you and it will poke at you. And the, it's the easy part to just say, you know what? I don't want to see it and pull the blanket over your eyes and just go back to sleep. But also the thing is, once you start waking up, waking up and you see the reality around you, you can't deny it any longer. And a lot of people choose to not ever even peep because People are afraid of change and we, we have to learn to embrace the fact that change is very necessary because if we don't change, we're sitting, we're sitting stagnant. So as you're sitting stagnant, what happens? You begin to rot, you begin to wilt, you become hopeless, you become more and more toxic. So I encourage you not to accept the fact that you live in a toxic world and you have to be a part of it. Because, yeah, we're all a little crazy. It's fine to be a little crazy. But to be um, in denial about that is the thing that can destroy you. So just open your eyes, open your heart, and try to consider the fact that it's going to be a lonely walk for a minute. But I guarantee you, you will begin to attract a higher vibrational energy and people that are a part of your soul tribe. We all have energies that like low, low and high, yeah, uh, opposite. But um, when you, you start to pull away from these, these start to pull towards you. So now you got a tug of war, right? And you're going to feel like you're stretched and strained. I remember those days. And I remember all of the tears. I remember my body even aching, my ears ringing, they still ring. <laughs> but when it comes down to these little symptoms, that is your 
body kind of rearranging itself to get away from one vibration. And it's just like this right here. It was a vibration. And that vibration that this puts out, it allows you to begin to heal. Heal. Can't see the pattern very well. But this is one of those things that every time I play this, the vibration that goes through my body, it's almost like you can feel the cells restructuring. You can feel the healing. <clears throat> Add sage to that and Palo Santo and sit and just breathe. The effects you can get from that are almost out of this world. So I did not realize that was a skill <laughs> had it pointed out to me because a lot of people say, Oh, let me try. And being who I am, I don't like them touching my things as a person that has spiritual items. Other people that own these things know that you don't want someone else's energy on your energy, but in the sense that I want them to feel the energy and the power in their own hands. I let them touch it because I can cleanse it, but it's very important to start protecting yourself from outside sources that can come in contact with your possessions, because there are things that do carry, this is going off on crazy, curses and hexes and things that are meant to kind of stop you in your tracks, because there are people that can touch an item that belongs to someone else and they can feel the energy of that. I actually will not pick up things that I do not know where they came from or someone brings me something. I'm like, you can just put it right there. And I can sense if I want to touch it or not. Most of the time I don't want to touch it because this is a toxic little world that we live in. So probably a lot of information and a lot of what in the world is she talking about? But the more you open up and the more that you actually look for yourself, because there's information everywhere. There's so many different healers in this world and we all have our own little techniques because that's who we are. You know, it's not something you can buy on a shelf. It's an energy that we possess. So not everyone is willing to share their gift either. So everybody that is sharing their gift, kudos to you and I send love and light because there's been a lot of people that I've seen like tarot readers and <clears throat> other healers that when they do put forth their energy into the world, you can almost see the ripple of healing in the world. And for all the healers that haven't stood up yet, I encourage you. <clears throat> Someone really doesn't want me speaking today. My throat chakra is just trying to be blocked, but we're doing okay. So anyways, to all those healers that haven't stood up yet, I encourage you to start standing up and spread your light because when you get to the point of the darkness is trying to consume, when all of us little lights come on, what do we do? We shine the light on the toxicity and that allows for people to start recognizing that um, change is needed. And I, I can guarantee you change is happening before your very eyes. Nobody sees it because it's just like when the trumpet blows, only a few will hear the call. But for years, there's been a beating, a pulse. I've heard it. And it is the calling from Mother Earth to awaken, awaken your spirit, awaken your soul, because as above, so below. So when you've got a higher power kind of provoking you to see the world for what it is, and then that which is below urging you to take a stance, to make a difference at some point here in the middle, you're going to hear the call. It doesn't matter if it's on your deathbed. It doesn't matter if it's in the middle of something you don't want to do. And all of a sudden your spirit says, no. And you're going, I used to be able to do that. 
I used to not think about that. But as you begin to think about it, like I said, there's things that will fall to the wayside. There's, there's something that happens within you. It happened within me. And I've seen it happen within other people. It's the wake up. It's the thing that just says, don't keep going down this path. It's almost like driving down a one-way street the wrong way, seeing the signs that say, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. And you just keep going. But why? Why chance the life that you're living when all you have to do is just blink, wake up, see the world around you? Because nobody is okay being abused and nobody should be okay watching others be abused. And abuse comes in so many different forms. Belittling, berating, degrading, unfair pay, overworking, undervaluing, hatred, fear. You can keep going with a list. You could probably write a huge list yourself of what you see it to be because you see the world differently as, than I do. And it's like the one thing I've told my kids None of us will ever have the same experience in this world. You don't smell what I smell. You don't see what I see. You don't hear what I hear, taste what I taste. You don't feel what I feel because some people get a thrill out of horror movies and others are just like, no, it puts something in a, in your mind that you don't want in there in the first place and you can't get out. And now it bothers you. Like I said, others get that thrill. Some people see life to be more of a reality while others see it to be more of a dream. It just depends on your perspective in life. And a lot of people, I was one of them at one point, see it to be a nightmare. So when you feel like you're in that nightmare, I urge you to wake up. Just take a breath, look around and don't be afraid because it's so simple. Once you realize the only thing that can be taken from you in this world is this vessel, that's not even death. It took, the second time my ex tried to take my life from me. First time put fear into me. Second time said, I ain't got nothing to lose. All you can take from me is this. Have it. I don't care. Because it, at that point, there was no reason in living anymore. He had already tried to take my life. And I got to the point where death would have been better than being in the situation I was in. And if you're at that point in your life, if someone is doing you so dirty that you want out, find your escape in your mind. You can find your escape, I promise you, because the labyrinth that you are stuck in, it's all up here. It's like right now I'm going through a, a I won't say a tough situation. The things that I was planning and I wanted to do are kind of being slowed down. And that could either break me, bring me to my knees, make me give up, or just make me go, Usa. <laughs> and all I've done is go, okay, just a little bit longer. And it's just like when you're in labor, anybody can understand this, a man or a woman, that when, when you're in the midst of it, you're like, good Lord, it's taken forever. It, are we ever going to be done? Some people only go through it for hours. Some people go through it for days. <laughs> my, my heart goes out to you. But when it comes down to it, it's a process. And it's a process you cannot rush. If you rush this process of new life or waking up, then it's something that you can destroy in an instant. So understand patience is very necessary. And that's why it tells us that patience is a virtue. It's something that not many people possess because we live in a world of instant gratification. So if you can remember to just start breathing, look at the reality around you, accept it for what it is and start changing what you don't like within yourself. And I'm talking about the reflection of the world, what you see around you, start changing within you. If you can't stand the fact that other people are um, <clears throat> working too hard. Don't work so hard. If you can't stand the fact that people overeat, don't eat too much. Leave a little extra on your plate. 
if you can't stand the fact that people go to church. Find your own way to praise and give thanks. There's a lot of things that we all have opinions about. And when it comes down to it, your opinion is your, your opinion. It is not a fact. There's nothing factual about the way you feel. It is all something that makes you comfortable. But the thing is, when you get comfortable, you get stagnant. And it goes back to that sitting, degrading, wilting, and not being prosperous. So just hopefully you get something out of what I said. And I'm gonna end it on the same note that I came in and sending you love and light. And just remember to give gratitude for everything in your life.